Joey, when we're talking to someone, please don't use any more movie quotes. Like just <laughs> right off the bat. Really? Really? In this interview, right off the bat, there was so much wisdom that we oh. needed to get to. And you're going to go movie quotes. I'm going to go ahead and say, if you expect me to pass up an opportunity to say Barcelona, <laughs> when it actually fits the person's situation, I'm not just like, you know, making something fit that doesn't fit. I'm I'm not going to pass it up. I'm right. sorry. This is your opportunity to pretend you're bilingual, right? <laughs> exactly. exactly. Hey, we're 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 interviewing today Billy Kills from the Going Long podcast. This guy brought nuggets today, Joey. I was sitting no there thinking through all the steps that he talked about of why you need to understand what you're doing, what that goal is. It matches so much up with what we're talking about. Finding out where you want to invest, how to build a team. I mean, it, it, it's just he's just speaking our language. Well, and and not to mention the importance of the support piece, right? The fact that he had people around him encouraging him to look into options that were outside of his comfort zone, right? I mean, he he made the point that he had grown up being the guy that was like the perfectionist, the guy that was making all the straight A's, doing what he thought was exactly what he was supposed to do, and yet it wasn't getting him to where he wanted to be. In fact, I totally resonate with the fact that your family and that time with your family is getting sucked away from you if you don't take action, right? It's, I think it goes back to the thing that I've been on right now. It's just hearing that Colin Powell quote, right? The 47 year old, being willing to take imperfect action. For some of us, we're okay being imperfect. For Billy, right? Like he 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 says he's a recovering perfectionist. Sometimes you, you feel like you need a, a thousand percent of the information before you can move forward. And I think that that's what I was taking away from him. So if you're one of those that feel like you, uh, you want more control, but you, you're struggling to take that first step for whatever reason that you don't have enough information or you feel unprepared for what you're going to embark on. I think this interview with Billy is going to give you wisdom because he's doing investing not only from a different city state, but from a different continent. Joey, I don't want to waste any more of our listeners time. Let's jump into this interview right now with Billy kills. Welcome to the wealth without wall street podcast, your guide to understanding how to get out of the wall street rat race and start your own mailbox money lifestyle. Now, don't let these handsome Southern draws fool you. These financial minds are teaching our country to enhance savings, increase cash flow, and create passive income, all without the help of Wall Street. Are you ready to break through? Now here are your hosts, Russ Morgan and Joey Murray. Welcome into the show, guys. We are going long distance today. You're getting for a treat. We're meeting with Billy Keels from Barcelona. Billy, welcome to the show, my friend. Wow, Joey. I mean, starting off so strong directly with Barcelona. Wow. I am excited. <laughs> Russ, I can't, can you believe that? <laughs> this is going to be amazing. <laughs> oh, man. Joey's been waiting to use that line ever since he watched that movie. It's it's definitely in our repertoire. Now we actually have somebody that we can use it and you can correct him on how poorly he pronounced that. No, it, it, like, here's the thing, Russ. It, I mean, it was perfect. That's the whole thing. I mean, it was just amazing. Yes. Yeah. yeah Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Billy. Oh my goodness. You just, you're good for this dude's ego, Billy. Thank you for being <laughs> on the show. Grateful to have you. You're somebody that recently left the, the corporate workspace fired your boss. I don't know if you know this, we actually have a goal within our community for a hundred people this year to fire their boss, become either professional investors or just do their own thing. Right. Yeah. And so you, you've done that, but that wasn't the start of your journey. So I want to go back for those, for those who are not listening to the go in long podcast, which you need to Billy has an amazing uh, interview list where he talks to other professionals who are looking to do that very thing to fire their boss. I, I highly encourage you to go listen to his podcast. So Billy, talk to us a little bit about the journey. Where did you start to get to where you are now? Yeah, sure. And if you allow me just to say two things, um, number one, uh, for everyone that continues to invest your time here, um, if you haven't had a chance already, because I know both Russ and Joy do an amazing uh, role to bring you so much value, make sure you take just a couple seconds to leave them an honest review and a rating. Like it goes so far just as a, as a fellow show um, podcaster. And I know you guys do an amazing, amazing role uh, in, in bringing value. And also, 
you can check out episode 184 because Mr. Jo- Joey Murray was uh, was there and he was adding loads and loads of value. It was an amazing conversation. So um, with that, just as a backdrop, I guess the thing that I would say is, yes, I'm in Barcelona, Spain, uh, but I'm a guy who started out uh, from the Midwest. I'm from Ohio. By the time I was 12, we'd lived in like three different states, probably seven or eight different homes. Uh, both of my parents were definitely blue collar, worked two jobs. I watched them kind of at towards the end of the month, had to make decisions if they were going to buy A or B. We we're never in a position where we didn't have things, but I watched just what my parents had to go through to make sure that they had the right things on the table for us. And they also made a lot of sacrifices to make sure we were in the right school district so we had access to education. Everything really started there. Uh, By the time I finished college, went to college, had two degrees. um, Right after college, my world kind of changed completely. I had a chance to work and travel throughout some 58 different countries. After being rejected twice by my dream job, I thought the world was over. And little did I know the world completely opened up. I had such an amazing experience after that five years in 58 countries that I didn't want to do a quote unquote normal nine to five. Uh, Fortunately for me, I was accepted at a university in Paris called the Sorbonne. Uh, where I went to go learn how to uh, learn more about the French language and culture. I wanted to learn more about wine and I wanted to learn how to salsa dance. I don't have any idea where that last one came from, guys, but it was just that's what I wanted to do. Uh, It was pretty amazing. Great opportunity. um, But that was a one year sabbatical. Uh, Since that one year sabbatical that I took in September of 2001, um, I also moved to Italy. I was there for about seven months. I then moved back to France. I've went from there back to to move to Spain because I met this really cool, cute Spanish woman and we had a couple kids and I've learned four languages along the way. So I have that one year sabbatical turned into uh, 20 years, three countries, four additional language, a marriage and two children. So that's the other thing that I always tell people, hey, you got to be careful. You got to be careful. So, uh, man, I, Billy, I've been on a 30 day sabbatical and I've learned nothing in this year of time. So, I mean, wow, Joey, I think I need to take a couple more days off. I got some languages to learn. I don't know about the kids part. I, I think I got that covered. No, no, yeah, I'll you're stop good. You're there. Good. Uh, I, salsa dancing. I could, I could get in on that. That'd be, that'd be at my speed. I'm more of a hustle guy, Billy, not okay. salsa, right. but okay. hey, you know. All right. All right. <laughs> Yeah, still no, you know, that's that's same same brown. <laughs> yeah, it it no, it's I'm, you know what I'm just gonna leave that one there. I'm not even gonna go anywhere with that one. <laughs> but I do want to come back in that and answer the the question that you mentioned also too, kind of like how I get to how I got to this point. And one of the things that I had always done because I'm a recovering perfectionist, uh, which means that I was a good student in school, like I got all A's, one or two B's. College went really really well, and. When I left, I also got in the corporate world. I was rookie of the year. I was in top talent programs. I was really, really doing every single thing that the corporation told me that I needed to do. And I was excelling, got the promotion opportunities, all this kind of stuff. But the thing is, I had this moment in my life and and it and, and my whole world literally changed like inside because while I was doing all of these things that I was supposed to do, I remember in 2000, the dot com bubble happened. And so I, you know, I don't come from a family with a lot of money and I was working really, really hard. I started to learn how to save and then invest. And all the money that I was putting with my financial advisor at the time, it kind of lost its value. And I was like, well, hang on a second. I freaked out. I was, you know, really concerned. Like, hey, what do I do? And, oh, you know, I got this thing like, hey, listen, there's this dollar cost averaging. You just keep putting in and you'll be okay. And that was true because like seven, six and a half, seven years later, everything was going really, really well. And then 2008 happened and I had a um, really pretty negative event and I lost 33% of the portfolio that I had on, on paper, right? And so then I was completely freaking out. I was like, I don't know what to do anymore because it happened once, shame on them, happened twice, shame on me. That's what my parents always told me. And so I got to a point that I needed to take more control uh, over my life. Uh, but I didn't really, I started reading books, but I didn't really do anything. I didn't take action. I was reading a lot, but not actually taking action. I knew things wanted to happen. Well, I also mentioned I was, we got married um, about, I don't know, 14 months, 15 months later or something. Our, our first child was born. And then we had another one 18 months later. And the thing I will never forget is, you know, I was, as the good student, I was, I wanted to do all the things and I wanted to be the, the great dad and I wanted to be the great corporate soldier. And my kids were the thing that I kept saying, my wife and my kids, these are the most important thing for me. And on my son's third birthday in 2012, I'll never forget because I had to wake up at like 5 30, 6 o'clock in the morning. I had to be on a flight at about quarter to eight. I, had, I woke my wife up 
with our one year old, you know, you can imagine they're in the bed and half sleep and all this kind of stuff. We went and got the three year old up because I wanted to at least sing happy birthday to him because that same morning I was on my way to the airport in a business meeting that I can't even tell you guys today what that business meeting was really about. Um, I remember us having a dinner that night and talking about all the plans we were going to do and the, in the, in the clients that we were going to serve while my three-year-old son was having a birthday party with my in-laws and my youngest son and my wife. And I missed that. Right. And that's something I can never, ever get back. But I remember getting in the elevator that morning and, and it kind of my, like literally my heart sank as I was going down the elevator. And I was just thinking to myself, well, something's not right here that I didn't want it. This is not what I should be doing. I should be leaving my family when, when my son's third birthday. And so that was kind of the moment that things really changed. And I had to go from that theoretical knowledge that I was reading about to actually start taking action to get more control over my life so that I could actually do and have the freedom to choose and be with who I wanted to be when I wanted to be. And and when I wanted to be with them. So um, you asked me that, and it's probably not the best story in the world, but that was the day that things started uh, really changing for me inside and started taking action. Well, I, Billy, what you're saying is what so many people tell us when they engage with Wealth Without Wall Street in our process is it may not be in the exact same story, but it is some story that gave them an anchor point that said, this is when this stops happening. Yep. Right. I, no longer am I going to just, quote unquote, put up with the default that life has kind of set me on a trajectory for. And I've got to take action. So talk to me about you had this theoretical knowledge. You had this moment. What was the first thing you did as far as an action step? Yeah. So the first thing that I did and I, you know, I wish I had the book with me right now is I, when I've, I sat down and I actually wrote down my goals. And I remember writing uh, over the period of time, you know, I said to myself, hey, listen, I, I want to be able to create. And I said, I want to be able to create $5,000 of, 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 of recurring income in the next five years and have X number of doors under, under um, in my portfolio. And then from there, it was about how, do, how did I then take what I'd written down? Because I've been, I've been in sales and sales leadership for 26 years, right? So a lot of this is how do you write things down and then break it down and work towards the goal, right? Work toward your annual sales quota, similar type of thing. And then so from there, what I realized is I had a lot of theoretical knowledge, but I didn't actually know what I could do. A lot of the books that I started reading, like I read, like most people, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and kind of went down that rabbit hole and wanted to do a lot of things. And so what I realized is that I wanted to buy real estate is what I wanted to start doing. And I, I looked and I took all the theoretical knowledge and I took that in here to Barcelona and I tried to figure out how that would work. Well, guys, I wasn't sophisticated enough at the time to realize that I'm not in that type of location. This is not a, an, a location where you can get, you know, cash flow. It's an appreciation market. And so all the numbers and the theory that I thought every single time I kept penciling it out, I kept showing up. It was, you've got to pay 50 euros. You've got to pay a hundred euros. You've got to pay 200 euros. And I was like, this doesn't work guys. This doesn't work. And so one thing led to the next, I had a couple of friends that were like, Billy, you're American. Why don't you look at buying property in the United States? And I was thinking to myself, are you serious? You really want me to buy in the United States? I live in Barcelona. Like the United States, it's like 10,000 kilometers from here. How am I supposed to be able to do that? Like that doesn't even make any sense to me. And, but because I had these different friends that said this, I was like, oh my gosh, I need to take it. I need to figure this out. And so that's when I started figuring, okay, well, I have money in the bank. I knew that I had money. I wanted to gain more control. And so then I just had to start figuring out how do I get lending? And so I called family members and asked them if they knew somebody that could help me talk me through what lending was and how I would get more, uh, get a loan and all this kind of stuff. And then I met someone at, uh, at a bank. The bank person introduced me to someone who was a general contractor. The general contractor introduced me to someone who was uh, a, a, a real estate agent. And then from there, that's how the team actually started to get built. But it all started because I took all this theory. I sat down, I wrote down what the goal was. And then I started working towards getting that goal, just like I've been doing the previous like 18 years um, in sales and sales leadership. So that was kind of the kind of where it got started and some of the action steps that I, that I took. Yeah. Well, I mean, as, as everybody's listening to this, they're like, wait a second, this is exactly what Joey must preach every single time on this podcast, GPS goal plan yep. support. Like you gotta have the goal, gotta be able to create a vision for yourself of what you want to do without that. 
you're just navigating without knowing if you're actually heading and getting closer to your path, right? Whether that, you know, no matter what your thing is, and that was your thing. So also I hear in there, and we get this a lot too, Billy, is that, man, I'm afraid to invest in a city outside of where I live, much less a state, much less a country, right? So talk, talk us through a little bit of those things, because you, you mentioned like trying to find the people, trying to find the real estate um, agents, right? Trying to find the team abroad. What were some of those lessons you learned that you could share with somebody who's thinking about investing in a city or state, much less a country away from where they are? Yeah. So, I mean, the, the first thing is just really, and it's the same thing as you guys talk about, it's, it's being really crystal clear on why you even want to do it in the first place. I knew I needed to control and I was definitely not going to go back to leaving any of my children or my wife or any of the events that for me were very, very special or for our family, right? So that was the biggest thing, being crystal clear on why you want to even take this track. Um, and then once that started to happen was 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 really a matter of saying, okay, well, I know where, where my strengths are because I, I, I know myself relatively well. I know what I'm good at. I know what I'm not good at. Even though I'm a recovering perfectionist, I, perfectionist, I sometimes try to do too much. Um, but but basically, it was it was recognizing why I wanted to do it, and then I started being able to take take the steps right. It, it, and and it's no different. I mean, yes, I'm investing from a different continent, but the steps are the same. It's when you know why you want to do it, you then start building the team that can help you actually do it. I, I, actually, let me tell it the other way around like, because. What I did in the beginning is definitely what I would tell you not to do because I had the money. I started meeting people and then I just bought the property, right? And, and what I realized was when I bought the property, then the, 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 the residents that were there were having problems. I didn't have any systems in place, right? I had certain people, but I didn't have any systems in place. Um, and then I had to hodgepodge the team and then I didn't really know much about the location I was in. I just bought it because it was merely a fear-based decision because I didn't want, I thought if anything goes wrong, at least I can call family members and they can get there relatively quickly. Um, and that was it. Today, when you have the clarity of a vision and why you want to do what you want to do, then you go to the location as you're talking about just now. And then from the location, you start to then, like we would do, like, I mean, you could, I was doing it long distance. And so it started by picking up the phone. I realized what I wanted to do. I also recognized that I didn't know certain things. So I had a paid mentor and that was something that also helped me to gain even more clarity in terms of what I wanted to be able to do and how to go about doing it. And so it started by going to a lot of the different web based platforms that were there to find, get information on the different locations and start recognizing if there were certain realtors or if there were certain insurance people that I kept seeing all the time, that meant that these people were probably relatively active or pretty active in the locations where I wanted to invest. So guess who the people that I started calling were? Who were the people that were actually being very active and being very visible? Um, and then being able to recognize, did we align? Did we not align? Having initial calls uh, on by the phone or having them by a Zoom or Skype. But like any relationship, Eventually, when people understand that you are serious and that you want to not only build relationships, you also want to make purchases, you spend more time together. You start exchanging. You start understanding to see, are you actually have the similar or the same mission, vision, and values, most importantly. And then at a certain point, you will also have to put your money where your mouth is. And I actually left Barcelona, Barcelona, and traveled to the United States to meet with the broker, the agent, the insurance people face to face because the relationship in the investment was important enough because I knew that I was in a certain location and I wanted to go deeper. And then from there, and what I've now realized is when the first three things are in line, meaning you know why you want to do it, you know what location you want to go to, and you built the team that understands the location, understands what you're trying to achieve, and now what our investors are trying to achieve, then it doesn't matter what the what the opportunity is. It could be a four unit apartment building, a 300 unit apartment building. It could be um, you know, energy equipment. It could be ATM machines. It can be any of that stuff. It could be land. As long as those four things are in, or in order, then you set yourself up for the highest probability of success. I just read this comment. It was so drawing joy. I wanted to share it. I realized that my time is not really mine. It's my company's. Now I have to stop negotiating my time for money and I need to start working to become financially free. That's exactly how I felt when my daughter Adler asked me on the way to school, Dad, can you pick me up from school today? 
and I had to say, no, baby, I have to go to work. That's where I drew the line. In order for you to be clear on the things you need to do and stop doing and to know who you need to become so that you can stop trading time for money, join us right now at wealthwithoutwallstreet.com forward slash passport. Now let's get back to this episode. Well, and so what you just mentioned is very, I I kept hearing support, right? (laughs) Support is so important in this journey. Um, It came in the way of a mentor. And, you know, as you know, in our community, we have coaches who are there providing the support as well as the community members, which by the way, if you're not a part of this community, Billy and I were talking offline about like that this is a labor of love, but it's a place where like, Billy, you had friends that were pushing you in this space and like saying, Hey, why don't you look overseas? But how few people have that blessing, right? How few people are at their, you know, at their workspace and people are talking about financial freedom. It's it's rare, right? So join us. I mean, go to wealthwithoutwallstreet.com forward slash passport and get clear on what financial freedom looks like for you, as well as being around people like Billy. I mean, get get in there and meet Billy, DM him, tell him, tell him what you love about today's episode. But but I, I kept hearing support, how important that was, having a mentor, um, having people in your life. Talk about like how that then led into the next step. Like you went from single family type homes to then moving into other spaces you just kind of alluded to. Yeah. So one of the things that I, and this is one of the reasons that I I really love what you all are doing, you know, uh, Russ and Joey, because it's really, it's about finding the right tool to get you to the destination that you want to get to, or maybe the right vehicle is probably a better analogy, the right vehicle, or you may need to take a number of vehicles, right? To get to the destination. Uh, and b- because initially, if I looked back on it and people tell me all the time, well, hey, yeah, you really love real estate. And I think, well, yeah, but the, the problem that I was trying to solve is I wanted more control and I read books and I started going to reading, pod, listening to podcasts and things like that. And yes, I do really, really enjoy real estate um, because I think it's a, an amazing asset uh, asset class, if you will. But it helped me have more control. And I was doing that directly for quite a while. And as I was having more uh, in direct investment and buying and adding to my portfolio, that gave me the feeling of having much more control. I started seeing that there was more cash flow coming in. It wasn't something that I just got on a report and it felt like there was money coming into my account. It was literally like the transfers were happening into my bank account. So I actually could actually touch that money. There was no penalty. There was none of that kind of stuff. And I could then use that active act income that I had from my, from my job to go out and purchase passive investments, assets that were producing cash flow, and gave me much more control. And so that was fantastic. And what that did was I started actively purchasing these properties, smaller multifamily properties. I ended up buying a mobile home park. And then I started also meeting more and more people. And I'd never even heard of passive investing, guys. Like had no idea, no clue of what it even was. I was probably a year and a half into my journey, believe it or not, or two years into my journey. And then I realized, well, hang on a second. I can actually take, I can take three, $400,000 and actually place it with somebody else and they can actually do the work. I mean, I can keep going over here to my job. They do this. It gives me more control because it seems like a similar type of uh, investment where it's direct investment. And so then I found out about direct investment and I found out about these things called ATM machines. I didn't know much about it at the time, but I met a, a, a really great guy who was telling me about it and we sat down. It made sense. It was also part of the plan. This was another vehicle that was helping me to get to the destination. So I had this active thing that was going on. I had this passive thing that was going on. I then started investing in with other people and in, in hotels, a hotel development project, a couple of them now. And and eventually I started recognizing also too, because I'm not, I was not a real estate professional. My wife was not a real estate professional and we were making all of these investments. And at the same time, I started thinking, wow, well, hang on a second. There's these passive investments and they keep building up these passive losses, excuse me, were building up. And that was causing me some frustration. I was like, oh my gosh, I've solved these other problems. Now I've got a new problem. I've got all these passive losses. How can I solve this problem? And then that's when I also through relationships, met people that were in a space that were uh, that was in the energy space that in, in these particular projects, they helped me solve an issue that I had as a high wage earner and they helped me solve the active income problem. And so now investing in another vehicle, it's helping me to solve another 
problem that I had. And ultimately, each one of these vehicles that I'm using differently are helping me to get to the destination, which is being able to have the freedom of choosing what I want to do when I want to do it with whom I want to do it. And so it started in real estate, but that opened my mind to new possibilities and then continuing to meet wonderful people like yourselves that are talking about new ideas and have people with experience. It just opens up the, the, the perspective to getting to the destination that much faster. All right. So hopefully, so hopefully that hopefully that answers the question. Yeah, no, it does. And and I think we've talked about this a lot on the show is that creativity is what is lacking when we are in the Wall Street mindset, because the yeah. Wall Street mindset puts you in a position to just shut that part of your brain off. Just yeah. keep your head down, work and push your money into somewhere else where someone else is managing it. And it's a hope strategy. It's not something that you're taking active engagement in. Uh, but so it, it makes sense that you start that process and it starts to open up more. I, I liken it to walking down a tunnel. And when you start seeing the end, the other side of the tunnel, it's just got this really small light, right? And you can see there's something there, but you don't know the full gamut of it until you walk really further down. All of a sudden it starts to open up. It was always there, but you couldn't see except for a small percentage of it when you first started. Now, but you mentioned something that I think hopefully as you're listening to this, you said, wait a minute, he said an active income problem. Like, what does that even mean? How, what do you, what did you mean by that? Yeah. So, and, and I know I'll preface this, but a lot of people don't know, like we're, we're talking about ideas, concepts, not by no way giving anybody kind of advice, but one of the things that I did not realize because once again, where I come from, we didn't have a lot of conversations about money and even, um, as someone who was in the corporate role and really good at my role and things like that, I never talked about or thought about money. And it wasn't just about, it was a lot of times I thought about how much more money can I make, right? How much more money can I make? Cause in sales, like you just make more, you know, want to make more sales. And then when you're in software sales, especially I mean, you can have a lot of people that are really, really high wage earners. It's not uncommon for me to know people in my network that are seven, seven figure bonus check people during a year. Right. And, and so what I started understanding was it's not just the income, it's how you earn your income. And so what I started realizing is that as I was investing in a lot of things passively, meaning that I was placing capital with others because of the types of um, assets that they were, they were producing non-active or passive income. And that's one way to earn money or that's one way to generate uh, income is through passively doing that. But then when you're working in your job, so your W-2 income, for instance, that is you're, you're generating uh, revenue, but that is the, the IRS looks at that as uh, active income, or maybe you've heard earned income or, or ordinary income. And those are two different buckets. And depending on where you play or how you're generating that, that revenue, it stays in one bucket or the other. And so although I was getting a lot more control because I was using the vehicles that were, that were giving me more control, they were generating passive income, but I was still on the other side having high tax uh, obligations, 40, 50% because I was a high wage earner. And so what that caused in me was a bit of conflict because I was thinking, well, hang on a second, I'm doing the right things again, this recovering perfectionist mentality, a student, hang on a second, I'm, I'm investing and this is happening and these things are great. And eventually I would be able to recuperate those, those funds, those passive losses. It may take five years, 10 years, depending on what the investment opportunity was. But I thought to myself, I want to be like these really big corporations that have these really cool strategic five-year plans, but then they're managing their business on a yearly basis. And if there was a way for me from my earned income or that active income, if I could recoup some of that, that tax obligation and then use that in other types of investments that were passive that had a more tax efficient, then the, using these combined vehicles was a way to get me once again to the destination even faster. So the whole principle is understanding is the income passive income? Is it active income? And it also goes back to the whole point of making sure that you have the right team members because they can really help you understand what are the different tools? What are the different vehicles that you should be using to get you to your destination as quickly as possible? Hopefully well, that makes sense. Now, what you're saying too is, is that every time that we grow in our knowledge, we start to learn there's other things that we don't know, right? Oh, yeah. um, if we ever get to the point where we've arrived in knowledge, that's when we're really going to fail. 
And as you are going down this path, you're finding new things. You're finding out new things about yourself, finding ways to grow. You're finding new mentors. You're finding new team members to add to your team. And then you're finding out, man, I got new challenges. I'm making more money, but I, I'm also giving up opportunity, which is costing me, right? Because then we start to really think about, well, what if I would have had the ability to write off all of those losses, get access to that capital today? How much more could I have done? Could I have gotten to my, my number, my end goal faster if I could have done that. And every step away, as you're listening to Billy, you're, you're realizing there's so much wisdom here. That's why we're telling you, you got to be listening to this podcast. You got to DM within the community so that you can connect. And as Joey says, I mean, we've got to find other people who are on the same journey as we are. So you may be one of those who's just starting out and you need to just go through the whole passport challenge and find out what your goal is. You may be somebody who's listening to this as an accredited investor, high income earner. You're like, I've been doing a lot of things, but there's things clearly that I need to up my game to. And maybe for you, that's to join our Passive Income Mastermind. You can go to wealthspotwallstreet.com forward slash club 200, where you can get access to people who are in this space, who have figured out these things ahead of time and are now a part of it that you can just tap into and not only get, but also give. Billy, there's so much wisdom here. We need to probably do 14 interviews <laughs> to be able to get it all out of it. But I, I, I want to point people towards you. I want to um, ha have people that want to reach out outside of the community. Where would you tell them to connect with you? Yeah, so I was just going to say, first of all, I would say reach inside the community because that's the the easiest, fastest way. And I just I, I love the app that you guys have. And I, I just think it's so easy. It's so cool. It's so, so great. And it makes it easy to connect with everybody within the community. Uh, I also outside of the community, uh, it's happy to connect with people through LinkedIn. That's one of the, my favorite ways uh, you can leave a personal invite. Let me know that you heard us or watched us here on the conversation today, which always helps the conversation. And also very, very happy to say you guys are one of the first to know that we We've just launched a new website, uh, which is really focused on how we're going to be best able to service and serve the, the accredited investor. If you go to firstgencp.com, that's firstgencp.com for first generation capital partners. And uh, you can find out more about what we're doing uh, there. And uh, guys, I, I just really, this has been awesome. I'm so excited about having had the opportunity, invest the opportunity here with you guys and, and be able to speak uh, to the entire community. And uh, it's, it's been an honor, definitely. So thank you very much. But well, we're we're uh, constantly um, liking, loving to hear stories like yours, you know, that we all didn't start in the same place, but having the same trajectory and learning the same things. We're hoping that this story will help people to shorten the time frame. Like that's what Russ and I talk about is we're just beggars trying to tell other beggars where to find the bread. And man, hopefully you don't have to stand as long a line as we did. So uh, man, Billy, thanks again uh, for you who are listening. We're so grateful for you and have an amazing day. This has been the Wealth Without Wall Street podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to the show to break free of the Wall Street mindset and begin building wealth on your own terms in places you understand so that your wealth will never run dry. See you next episode.